أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا أحمده وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا وقائدنا وقرة أعيننا محمدًا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وحبيبه وخليله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون فأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى أتاه اليقين اللهم صلِّ وسلِّم على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وأزواجه وذريته كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وأزواجه وذريته كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إن في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد أما بعد فيا عباد الله إني أوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله All praise is due to Allah, Lord of the world I bear witness that there is no God except Allah He is alone, without partners And I bear witness that our master, our prophet and our leader Muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Is his servant and messenger May the peace and blessings and salutations of Allah be upon him Upon his pure family upon his noble companions and all those that follow them in excellence until the day of judgment and may he subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst them by his infinite mercy and I counsel you and myself to have the taqwa of Allah 
The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa in an authentic narration has said, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من والده وولده والناس أجمعين None of you truly believes. And here the Prophet sallallahu in many different narrations tells us about attributes which complete one's faith. Attributes which if they are not present in the heart of a believer, if they are not present amongst the actions and attributes of a believer, then one's faith, iman, is deficient. And in this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ tells us that that attribute is loving him, but not just loving him. He said, وسلم, none of you believes, i.e. none of you truly believes, until I am more beloved to them than his parents, than his children, and all other people. Here the Prophet ﷺ is telling us the place and the status that he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam should have in the heart of every single believer. And he compared that to your parents and your children. Why your parents and your children? Because your parents, as we know, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructs us in the Quran, are the people that we are to respect the most. Are they are the people that we are supposed to have the most honor for. They are the people that are most beloved to us. Our parents are the reason we came into existence. They are the cause that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used to bring us into existence. They raise us. And our children, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has placed within our hearts a natural love and compassion and mercy for one's children. A parent looks out for their children no matter what the circumstances, no matter how they respond in return. Yet the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us, that a mark of our true faith is for him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be more beloved to us, more beloved in our hearts, more um, beloved in our hearts than our own children and our own parents and all other people. And this is something that we see which was applied by the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Sahaba radiallahu anhum ajma'een, they are our models. How do we understand the religion? that the Prophet ﷺ came. How do we even know the religion? Through the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. And they had these meanings firm in their hearts and in their lives. Our mother Aisha, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with her, tells us of a man who one day he came to the Prophet ﷺ and he said to him, O Messenger of Allah, sometimes I'm at home and I'm sitting with my family and I remember you. And he says, when I remember you, I long for you. I, I'm, it unsettles me. This is a man who's with his family, with the people that are most beloved to him. He says, but I'm not at peace. I just want to see you. He says, I get up. I'm resting. I'm comfortable in my home. But I'm yearning for you. And so he said, I get up and I come looking for you. And when I see you, my heart is at ease. This is the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. He says, but then I remember that I'm going to die. And I remember that you're going to die. And that you, after death, in the hereafter, will be in the station with the prophets. And me, even if I get into Jannah, and this is the companion of the Prophet ﷺ, look at his humility. Says, even if I get into Jannah, where am I going to be without you? Where am I going to be? I'm not going to be in the same rank as you. This is the concern of the companion of the Prophet ﷺ. Meaning that he's even visualized and envisaged that he might be in Jannah. But being in Jannah wasn't enough for him. Being in paradise, he said, I'd still be in a worried state. Why? Because I'm not with you. I cannot see you. And to this, the Prophet ﷺ didn't have an answer. But the answer came from above, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He sent Sayyidina Jibreel to respond to this man. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals to the Prophet ﷺ, وَمَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَسُنَ أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقًا That those, or whosoever, obeys Allah and the Messenger, they will be with. فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ With. The Nabiyyin, the Prophets, the Siddiqeen, the highest of the righteous, the highest of the pious. Was shuhada, the martyrs, 
was salihin and the righteous wa hasuna ulaika rafiqa and what a great company that will be this was the response from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to this companion who yearned for the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam who couldn't even bear to imagine jannah without being with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam in another narration we hear of the story of the bedouin man a bedouin arab and as we know the bedouins weren't uh, aware of the correct etiquette so this man he came while the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was giving the khutbah and while the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was giving the khutbah he stood and he said ya rasulullah mata sa'a o messenger of allah when is the hour obviously this is not something behooving the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam continued with the khutbah after he finished his prayer the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam turned around and said aina sa'il where's the man who asked the question the man made himself known and then the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said mada a'dadta laha he didn't answer the question directly nobody knows when the hour will be and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam wanted to teach us as well that we shouldn't be worried about when the hour it should be but we should be worried with the question that he asked sallallahu alaihi wasallam mada a'dadta laha what have you prepared for it this is what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam wants us to be worried about but look at the response of the man a simple man a simple bedouin man he doesn't have complicated philosophical answers he said oh messenger of allah i don't have many actions meaning i don't do anything more than what is required and what is obligatory for me but there is one thing i love allah and his messenger and that to, to that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam gave a response that elated the companions when they heard it this is anta ma'a man ahbabt and the man said i love allah and his messenger the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said you are with the one that you love you will be with the one that you love sayyidna anas ibn malik the close companion and servant of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that we didn't rejoice from the day that we became muslim we didn't rejoice like we did on that day why because out of the humility the companions knew we we can do all these actions but they may or may not be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but what they were certain of was the love in their hearts for the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said anta ma'a man ahbabt you will be with the one that you love we were elated this was almost a guarantee for them because they had this love firm in the heart of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, firm in their hearts for the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and those companions that were closest to him most intimate in their knowledge of him sallallahu alaihi wasallam what the greatest in their love for him sayyidna abu bakr as-siddiq radiyallahu ta'ala anhu lived only two and a half years after the death of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but on many a night after he would go home he would sit down with his knees up and his head buried in his knees calling out the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam weeping like a baby these are not my words weeping like a baby the words of his wife Our lady Asma bint Umais she said he would sob like a baby calling out Muhammad missing his friend and she said I would calm him down I remind him how close he was to him I would remind him all the things that he did in in giving him aid and giving him support and that he and then he would calm down and he would calm down like a baby calms down after it's been crying it doesn't just shut off but it's slow it's sobbing slowly decreases in volume this was the way of the companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but why did they love him so much Why did they love the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in this manner that we would associate with uh, crazy people with rom- romantics they loved him sallallahu alaihi wasallam because they knew who he was they didn't know the true reality of him sallallahu alaihi wasallam but the glimpses of the reality that they saw they fell in absolute love with him his beauty sallallahu alaihi wasallam his physical beauty the beauty of his character sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the fact that he came to take them out of darkness into light this is why they loved him sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam was so concerned for them as well just as he is concerned for every single one of us allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, revealed in the quran al yawma akmaltu lakum dinakum today we have completed the religion for you but did that end the affair for the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam it didn't the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam was continuously worried for his ummah every single one of us He sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that every single prophet was given a particular re- re- request a dua 
that would be answered. And all the prophets ask, he said, except for me, I have saved mine for the day of judgment for my ummah. This is your prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if we come to know him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we can only increase in love for him. Wallahu yaqulu wa biqawli yahtadi al-muhtaduna jalla fi ula. Wa idha quri al-Qur'an fastami'u lahu wa ansitu la'allakum turhamoon. Wa qala ta'ala fa idha qara'at al-Qur'an fasta'idh billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim. Wa man yuti'i allaha wa rasoola fa ulaika ma'a alladheena an'am allahu alayhim min al-nabiyyeen wa al-siddiqeen wa al-shuhadai wa al-salihin. Wa hasuna ulaika rafiqa. بارك الله لنا ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعنا وإياكم بما فيه من الآيات والذكر الحكيم أقول قول هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولوالدين ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ولي الصالحين وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله قائد الغر المحجرين إلى جنات النعيم صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه حق قدره ومقداره العظيم وعلينا معهم فيهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين أما بعد فيا عباد الله إني أوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله The topic of loving the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and why we should love him is a vast one and we cannot do justice to it in such a short period of time. But then the question behooves itself to be asked, how can we increase our love for the Prophet If it is a marker of faith, if it's, it is so crucial for us to gain closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if it's so crucial for us to complete our faith, how can we do this? There are a number of reasons, many reasons. And some of these were alluded to by our Imam, Imam Ahdash in his khutbah last week. One of the ways is to know him sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Those that knew him most intimately loved him the most. And in this regard, our master Sayyidina Hassan, the grandson of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, someone who saw him, he said, I asked my uncle, Hind ibn Abi Hala, to describe the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam for, for me. This is despite the fact that Sayyidina Hassan and his brother Sayyidina Hussein, they saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, they lived amongst him. But he said, I wanted my uncle to describe the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam for me. Why? A description that I could hold on to, that I could imagine and visualize the Prophet. And this teaches us that knowing him, knowing how he was physically, but knowing about his beautiful attributes, knowing what he came to teach us with, knowing uh, his life events, his biography, knowing his companions, knowing his family, loving them, loving his ummah is a great means towards. Uh, gaining love for him sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahabi sallam. A second way is by following him sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahabi sallam. Following his beautiful sunnah. There is no example, no ethical system, no philosophical ethical system in existence which is greater, which, is, which can bring peace and harmony to the lives of humanity like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whether that is on an individual level or a familial level, or a community-based level, or on a societal level. Nothing is better than the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ for us to engender in our lives. But following the Prophet ﷺ has an external as well as an internal meaning. It is not just about outward actions, and those are important, but it, it is about internalizing that of the Prophet ﷺ. We said that the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, they did this based on love. But there were a group of people that came after the companions, in fact, during the time of the companions after the Prophet وسلم, which in Islamic history are referred to as the Khawarij, that they implemented the outward form of Islam to the T. And in fact, the Prophet وسلم, spoke about this. But they were missing the internal reality. They were missing the love of the Prophet وسلم, and, they, and they went away from the true teachings until they even made takfir. They considered many of the companions to be non-Muslim. Why? Because... They're following the Prophet. Their implementation and application of the religion was not an affair of the heart. It was not based on love. And so we learn this love. We learn this internal reality from the companions, the true inheritors of the Prophet uh, legacy. And the third thing that we can learn, and there are many uh, things that we can do to engender this love of the Prophet in our hearts, 
is to increase our salutations of him sallallahu alaihi wasallam and this is specifically what the imam last week mentioned about sending salutations peace and blessings to him sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam this benefits a believer directly some of the benefits the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to sayyidina ubay ibn ka'b a long hadith which we will summarize in which sayyidina ubay ibn ka'b said to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he was speaking about the optional duas and and dhikr that he does he said, what if I make all of my optional dua and dhikr to be salah upon you? The Prophet ﷺ said to him, If you do so, then all of your worries will be taken care of and all of your sins will be forgiven. This is one direct benefit that we can derive from sending salutations on the Prophet ﷺ. And on the Day of Judgment, the Prophet ﷺ said that the nearest of you to me, Yawm Al-Qiyamah, are those of you who send salutations on me profusely. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he um, firmly roots the love of the Prophet sallallahu in our hearts, that he gives life to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu in our hearts, in our homes, in our communities, and that he allows us uh, to tread the path that he sallallahu alayhi wa has uh, sent forth for us. Wallahu yaqoo ya ibadullah أن الله أمرنا بأمر بدأ في بنفسه وثنى بملائكته المسبحة بقدسه فأيها بالمؤمنين من عباده تعميما وقال مخبرا وآمرا لهم تكريما إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وأزواجه وذريته كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد بارك على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وأزواجه وذريته كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد ورضى عن صحابة رسول الله أجمعين خاصتهم ذوي القدر العلي ساداتنا وإمتنا أبي بكر وعمر وأثمان وعلي وسائر المبشرين بالجنة العشر المبشرين بالجنة وسيدنا الحسن والحسين وأمهما فاطمة زهراء البطول وعن خجية الكبرى وعن عائشة الرضاء وعن صائر رسول صائر أصحاب رسول الله أجمعين اللهم عز الإسلام وانصر المسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام وانصر المسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام وانصر المسلمين اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم اللهم كن للمؤمنين أينما كانوا في مشارق الأرض ومغاربها اللهم كن للمؤمنين في المغرب اللهم كن للمؤمنين في ليبيا اللهم كن للمتضررين من المسلمين أينما كانوا يا رب العالمين وعلم يا عباد الله أن الله أمرنا بأمر أن الله سبحانه وتعالى أمرنا بثلاث ونهانا عن الثلاث إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكر الله يذكركم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون السلام عليكم If you liked this video please hit the like button to help us promote it Press subscribe and the bell button to keep up to date with our future videos. You can also follow us on our social media channels, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, WhatsApp and Telegram. You can also find information on our website about events and services at the Masjid. Jazakallah care.